Hi there! In this video, we are going to talk about concurrent conceptual design and its implementation in modern engineering organizations, including new space startups. This is a continuation of the discussion we started in the previous video, where we introduced the concurrent design and put it in context of state-of-the-art practice of engineering design. We have discussed how a waterfall process would be very straightforward if there were no interdependencies in the design process. In complex engineering systems, though, design decisions on one subsystem do have an impact on other subsystems, and those interdependencies interact with each other in complex ways. This problem brings us to iterate on the design until convergence is obtained, and potentially to explore other approaches to make the design process more time efficient while ensuring consistency all throughout. As we have seen, information on the design is stored all over, from documents to spreadsheets, CAD models, step files, and much more. We have discussed how this is a real problem in organizations and how it could potentially lead to inconsistent information and unnecessary rework in the design flow. For simplicity from now on, I will be referring to concurrent conceptual design simply as concurrent design. I want to be clear though, the project phase that I keep in mind in this discussion that follows is indeed early conceptual design what in the European space standards would be called the phase A of a mission. Let us get started. Concurrent design as we know it in the space sector was pioneered in South California by TMEX, the integrated design team at NASA JPL, taking care of all mission formulation activities in the laboratory. In Europe, concurrent design was for the first time implemented at ESA with a concurrent design facility that is well known by its acronym CDF. The CDF became, over the years, since the end of 1990s, a cornerstone of all preliminary design studies at ESA. And likewise, TMEX studies are key stepping stones for validating proposals, assessing technical feasibility, and defining mission baselines at JPL. Since then, concurrent design spread in industry all over the world, taking on many different flavors. Concurrent design addresses the three key issues of waterfall design processes. One, project speed. 2. Cost and time of iterations, and 3. Consistency of design information. Concurrent design consists in the real-time parallelization of design work and co-location of the design team in a concurrent design facility, or CDF in short. From a tool perspective, concurrent design consists in the real-time sharing of data across discipline models and software so that the propagation of the impact of the design decision taken on a subsystem can be readily assessed on the entire system. A typical CDF is a service organization operating in a metrics organization. In this setting, a customer comes to the CDF, for example, having the need of defining a space mission baseline with a conceptual design study. Based on experience, the CDF will assign a study lead and a facilitator, which role may or may not be covered by the study lead throughout the study. The study lead puts together a preliminary schedule for the concurrent design study, which typically lasts from one to two weeks or longer, depending on mission complexity. The lead will also suggest mission specialists to be involved. These are typically seconded from the departments or divisions of the organization. Each person is involved is acquainted with the concurrent design methodology and brings along the disciplinary knowledge and the tools that are required to do the job. Once the study is initiated, the design team meets in the CDF. The CDF is typically a large room with computer means to visualize and share information, drawings, and models. You may be asking yourself at this point, what is a model in this context exactly? Let us have a closer look to engineering models for concurrent design at this point. The word model may be interpreted in many different ways. A model could be used to describe a system or, for example, to clarify its interfaces and decompose its constituent elements and concept of operations through a clear structure, semantics and ontology. For a simple and clear explanation of what modeling means in this context, I recommend you this video that Luciano Pollice, Massimo Bandecchi and myself have recorded on the subject, using a rather unconventional example. And what follows is a more technical explanation of the topic. Models in the context of the CDF are meant as practical tools for first-order sizing calculations of the subsystem. For example, answering simple questions such as what is the antenna aperture and transmit power window on board in order to close the downlink with the receiving ground station at the required rate. Models are by no means perfect and they're not meant 
to give super precise answers at this stage. Uncertainty around those estimates at early stages of the design can be as large as 30%. This is not an issue though at this stage. The point in preliminary design is really to start shaping a concept rather than deep dive into detailed engineering calculations. Typically, one would have an overall model of the mission and of its concept of operations. Each subsystem discipline would then have its model available in order to perform sizing calculations. The key here, and here is the problem, is that someone's input for a model is someone else's output, and there could be mutual dependencies between two or more disciplines. This is again the issue of feedback loops that we covered in the previous video. In this discussion, models encompass all means that engineers put in place to perform rapid sizing iterations and inform technical discussions and engineering design trade-off decision-making with objective facts. These sizing calculations are performed in a number of ways. The simplest form is calculation by analogy, by comparing the mission being designed to flown missions and taking similar assumptions when input design parameters are comparable. An example of analogy sizing could be that for a spacecraft of a certain size, mass and mission purpose, say Earth observation, we would assume a solar array size and battery capacity of a similar size to what we employed in similar missions in the past to start with. Other heuristic ways of quote-unquote modeling the same disciplines is by using rules of thumb, for example, estimating total mass of the power subsystem as a fraction of total satellite dry mass. Finally, a last heuristic approach makes use of expert knowledge of senior engineers who have spent 10, 20 or maybe even 30 years designing spacecraft, and they accumulated so much knowledge in their experience that can immediately come to good approximations of the optimal solution by educated best guesses to be later refined by calculations. A more sophisticated approach for sizing subsystems is the development or reuse of parametric design models. A parametric design model is a mathematical construct that estimates the outputs of the design discipline using first principle modeling, sizing equations, parametric models that are trained on historical data, and so on. Parametric models can be of high fidelity, such as finite element models for structural design, or CFD models, or they can be low fidelity models, such as simple Excel sizing spreadsheets. The appropriate level of fidelity in a parametric model depends on the purpose of the specific design phase. In early decision stages, the goal is to explore the stray space by evaluating as many concepts as possible while ruling out from the outset the non-interesting alternatives. This activity is typically accomplished by low-fidelity models that can run estimations in seconds or minutes at most. Parametric models can be fully automated or include humans in the loop. Usually, the most successful approaches combine full parametric explorations to actual design sessions with discussions between experts. There is so much knowledge encoded in an expert brain that it's difficult, if not impossible, to fully represent in a parametric mathematical model, despite the efforts that we, engineers in the research community, put to this end. This is, in short, the essence of the scope and possible options available to create low-fidelity design models for early design explorations. In later phases, a higher fidelity approach to design is the use of CAD models and other more detailed design approaches that are specific for each design discipline. In traditional approaches, higher fidelity calculations are also sometimes employed during preliminary design stages, especially by drawing from heritage flight programs. In a concurrent design study, a data exchange platform is used to connect all these models together. The typical data exchange connects Excel spreadsheets together that are designed to carry on preliminary sensing calculations of subsystems or interface with specialist software such as CAD or orbital simulation software, for example. The typical data exchange connects Excel spreadsheets together that are designed to carry on preliminary sizing calculations of subsystems or interfaces with specialist software such as CAD or orbital simulation software. In its first implementations, concurrent data exchanges consisted simply of Excel macros that copy-pasted values between interconnected spreadsheets distributed across a network. Concurrent data exchange platforms made a very long way since then and expanded on functionalities, ease of use, and even came up to creating open source communities of developers, and I would say even evangelists of the methodology into other domains. For example, we have seen the use of concurrent design in aircraft 
offshore oil and gas platforms, automotive, yacht design, technology road mapping, and other engineering fields. Check the links on the descriptions below to this video for papers reporting lessons learned and experiences from all these domains. The functions to be delivered by a modern data exchange platform, among others, are 1. Automated propagation of design changes across all involved models and documentation and recalculation of model outputs as needed. 2. Enabling team collaboration on shared documents. 3. Conflict resolution and prevention of corrupted data, for example, when two users operate on the same data at the same time. 4. Distributed version control to keep track of the evolution of the study and roll back to previous stages as needed. And 5. Ensuring traceability between interdependent data elements. Advanced functionalities of data exchange include, for example, useful analytics on the metadata on the study, for example, on the evolution of study iterations across iterations in order to define hot points or key decisions to be revisited in more detail. Another interesting type of metadata study is the analysis of data interdependencies in the overall concurrent design model, when all engineering models are connected with each other. The integrated analysis of such interdependencies can be used to optimize the sequence in which disciplines execute the work, and they can also serve as guidance to resolve design conflicts in a time-efficient manner. Other interesting features are the uh, automated generation of study documentation and, for example, advanced decision-making features such as recommender systems that support engineering trade-off resolution and perhaps even voice assistants someday. I've seen them in research. So now that we learned a bit more about software, let us see how this is used in the concurrent design process. In a CDF, design sessions are moderated by a facilitator who seeks to engage everyone in the design team and has a rough sequence or discipline order in which the iteration is performed. Technical discussions are held and design decisions validated using those interconnected sizing models. At the end of the session, a complete mission baseline is produced. This is, in conclusion, a concurrent design session as observed from, let's say, 30,000 feet altitude. So, in summary, how is concurrent conceptual design different from waterfall design? Let us look at the four key dimensions of engineering design that we discussed so far, and let us compare the two approaches. The four dimensions are 1. People, 2. Processes, 3. Tools, and 4. Infrastructure. In regards to people, waterfall design is about engineers working in departments and iterating through formal processes such as configuration management and sending documentation, quote-unquote, over the fence. Concurrent engineering is about bringing all people in the same room and resolving engineering trade-offs in a much faster way than what configuration management allows. If properly implemented, concurrent data exchange tracks all iterations, which means the traceability is preserved as well. So, on the people's side, I think concurrent engineering has a definite advantage. On the process side, Waterfall design is perhaps the clear winner. The waterfall design process is well known, it's well documented in standards and has been proven for a long time. On the concurrent design side, I would say that process is still an open question. So on this one, I would give waterfall design the advantage, at least at present time. On the tools side, I think both, both processes are almost tied, as we have plenty of toolkits available to implement both approaches at this point. I will give a slight advantage to concurrent design though, because of the advanced iteration tracking and analytics features that are typically not present at all in a waterfall design flow. However, I must say that such features are by far and large used in academic context and are yet to be fully adopted by industrial organizations. On the infrastructure side, concurrent design has a specific advantage in terms of performance in the sense that concurrent design rooms can be specifically designed to support parallel workflows, but they require investment. On the other hand, waterfall design does not require any special infrastructure and it's used every day in normal offices and meeting rooms. That being said, I must note that different from some years ago, where the predominant approach was to build a dedicated room with a lot of fixed infrastructure, such as multi-input-output displays, the scenario has changed now. We can implement concurrent design using wireless video sharing tools, advanced uh, teleconferencing systems, cloud services, and other means that make concurrent design with a much lower barrier to entry in terms of capital investment compared to the past. 
Perhaps I would still say that concurrent design outperforms waterfall design in terms of infrastructure options and flexibility. So in conclusion, if your organization requires strict process control and requires putting emphasis on configuration management, information control and confidentiality, and compartmentalization of access to information, perhaps waterfall design is the best way to go. Remember though, that such features come at a heavy cost, which in this case is obviously time. If on the other hand, your focus is on speed, time efficiency, and improved consistency of the information flow in the design, then give concurrent design a closer look, as its benefits may outweigh its costs by significant margin. If you want to know more about concurrent design and you want to learn more on the methodology and how it could be applied to a new space startup, there is a conference that you might consider attending. The European Space Agency organizes every two years a conference on this topic that is called CECESA. The link to the conference is in the description of this video, just here below. And last but not least, why is concurrent conceptual design relevant to new space? The answer is quite clear in my opinion. In the world of new space, we want to design and deploy a mission in 12 months or less. A preliminary design review in this world has to last at most three to six weeks, so to fit with accelerated development schedules. Speed is one of the key advantages that new space startups have against established industrial competitors. And therefore, any activity that provides speed to deliver innovation faster into the market shall be given a great deal of attention by the new space community. Concurrent conceptual design is that kind of activity that delivers speed to the organization. Researchers in the field of concurrent engineering have shown in the literature that is reported in the description here below, that the adoption of concurrent design practice has led ESA to reduce the average time for a phase A preliminary design study from six to nine months to three to six weeks. There are therefore two avenues possible for new space startups to utilize concurrent conceptual design to their advantage. One, New space startups may become adopters of concurrent design in their organization. They might even push it further and implement concurrent engineering more broadly along their production pipeline. By implementing concurrent design early and by training staff to work with a concurrent mindset, new space startups gain a tremendous advantage over the competition. And two, new space startups may become star innovators in the field of concurrent conceptual design. Several opportunities are available there. For example, new space startups may choose to develop advanced analytics for concurrent design sessions by implementing some of the results that the research community has obtained in the last two decades in this direction into industrial solutions. And another example, new space startups may operate transversely across industry sectors and bring concurrent conceptual design into applications that have not seen this way of working just yet. Startup companies are especially suited for this activity because they work in commercial, highly competitive markets. And also, they are constantly engaging with new actors and new stakeholders. So they may as well let their existing and prospective customers know that there is a new way of working around the corner that may benefit their business a great deal. And a third example, new space startups may decide becoming developers, innovators in the field of concurrent design. For instance, they might create APIs for software that is yet not interfaced with concurrent data exchanges and therefore open opportunities for new applications and use cases to come in. I have several ideas in mind when seeing how concurrent design intersects with new space. I truly see a notion of opportunities here. Thank you for watching this video. See you next time.